Okay, so now that you can distribute content, basic course content for your students, you may wish them to use Moodle interactively to create that content themselves. And that's what the activities in the main course content blocks are all about. So take a look at block number two, and you'll see activities here. I've, um, you can access activities to the right of the Add a Resource dropdown. So you can see a number of different possibilities, more possibilities for activities than resources, and many of which may not make sense to you and you'd never use, uh, some of which you might find extremely useful. I've uploaded three that you may find useful. The first is a quiz creation. You can create quizzes to be taken online, and as you create a quiz, you can create quiz questions, you can move those quizzes around, you can see student results on the quizzes, and um, in that way you can assess students online. You can manipulate uh, settings such that they are um, single attempts, multiple attempts, and you can create different sorts of restrictions on the quizzes as you wish. You can also create through the activities um, chat. Now chat will be a little bit different from a blog because when you enter a chat you can have real-time chatting with other students um, on a given topic and this may be useful if you wish students to conduct a chat at home um, in a group and you wish to monitor their discussion or you wish to do this during class. Some teachers are including chat functions as part of regular lecture and discussion so that students can immediately discuss and process concepts as they're being given and discussed in class. So the chat function will create little rooms in which unique users can discuss ideas with each other. And of course this brings up the idea that, um, or the fact that users must be unique and logged in in order to access activities. A guest cannot simply start taking a quiz nor participating in a chat and expect their activity to make any difference in the class. The last of these three is a Moodle forum. Now this differs from a Moodle chat because chat is a real-time discussion whereas a Moodle forum is more like a posting board where I can add a new discussion topic and I can say um, what is a forum? My message Help me understand the difference between a forum and a chat room. Please, hello. Well. I post it and continue. And you can see now that I have started a forum uh, about what is a forum, and different users can respond. So let me try that. I'll go back to the page, and I'll log myself out as the teacher. I'll log myself in as sunny student. Go to the course, little sample page. I'm going to open the blocks, block number two, Moodle forum, oh, and I see that my teacher has created a page. What is a forum? So I will jump into that forum, and I will reply. A chat is like a real discussion among people simul present forum is more like a bulletin board for posting questions and answers. And I continue, and I can see that uh, a reply has been made. Forums can be very useful for optional interaction with course content. If you wish students to be able to 
ask each other questions and help each other with the materials, then access to a forum uh, can be very helpful to take time off of your schedule in helping students answer these questions. They're already doing it on Facebook and other and uh, through chat or text functions, tweets, what have you. Um, it could be useful for you to include that option in the course environment for you to monitor and um, direct. So those are three activities that you may use. Let me go back to my teacher login. Back to the sample page. Turning editing on, don't forget about that. I can create other activities, including the ability for students to create their own pages through wikis, um, uh, different types of quizzes, uh, journaling. But remember the difference between a resource and an activity. A resource is directed by the teacher. It's uploading course content for students to understand and download. Activities are all about creating ownership in the student so that they can create their own content online. And the activities provide a, a wide range of different options for students to become a bit more involved in the class. Now, this can become a bit overwhelming for you as a teacher to manage and for them as students to manage, but um, it provides options and experiment with them. Try one, try two, uh, decide that it doesn't work for you and go to something else. But um, if you only want a unidirectional website from you to them, then you want to stick with resources. If you want a bi-directional website where you give them content and they give you content, then include some activities as well and experiment, play around.